In the 1930s, American plastic surgeon Claire L. Straith and physician C.J. Strickland advocated the use of seat belts and padded dashboards. Strickland later founded the Automobile Safety League of America. Their research quickly showed that major injuries to car drivers were most often caused by hitting the solid steering wheel. At first, they encouraged engineers to build steering wheels that bent or folded in a crash, removing sharp objects in the cabin and designing switches and levers that weren't a danger to occupants also became common, and the 1949 Tucker Torpedo became the first car with a padded dashboard. Later, manufacturers wary of spending money but keen to be supporting safety came around to the idea of restraining car occupants through the use of seatbelts. While the earliest seatbelts were devised in the 19th century, they weren't used in aircraft until the 1930s, and only in the 1950s did automotive seatbelts start to catch on. Seatbelt laws were last of all. It's a technology that's reckoned to have saved more than a million lives, and I think it will continue to save a million more in the coming years. It still has a great potential, specifically looking at usage. So it's, been a, it's ha had a tremendous effect, for sure. Swede Niels Bullin invented a three-point seatbelt for Volvo, first introduced in 1959. He realized that both the upper and lower parts of the body needed to be restrained during an impact such as a car crash. The greatest challenge was to create a simple and effective solution that people could fasten with one hand and that they would actually use. At that time, many people were very scared, uh, hesitating about how to be restrained the best way. So it was, uh, it was very uh, strong decision to implement this in cars. Initial tests were done with live engineers, but pain thresholds and the need to examine the results of higher speed crashes soon sidelined volunteers. Some research really was done with human corpses donated to science. Well, the seatbelt is the most important safety device fitted to any vehicle today. And since its inception, we've seen literally hundreds of thousands of lives saved um, with its fitment. And it really represented the very beginnings of modern vehicle safety. Well, it saved literally thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of lives uh, around the world. And what's been particularly important about it is it made it easier for people to protect them in, in uh, uh, cars by you know, one, one motion that they could buckle up. In, in the United States now, we're seeing uh, probably 15,000 people uh, a year whose lives are saved just by the act of buckling up their safety belts. In 1959, three-point safety belts became standard equipment in Volvos sold in the Nordic countries. To get the message through, to, to convey the world that this is actually something good was something that took a lot of effort uh, from Volvo and Niels Bolin. They did a, a world tour demonstrating it, uh, they did stunts, they did all these tests, showed all this data, but it took uh, a number of years before uh, the general public and also uh, the different governments around the world were, were persuaded that this is really a good technology, this is something that we should uh, enforce, which happened during the 70s and 80s. So I think that's uh, a recognition that uh, the working process that Volvo established at that time, that's, that's giving effect. Bullin's invention was regarded as so important that the German patent office declared it to be one of just eight patents that had had the greatest importance to mankind over a 100-year period from 1885. Few people will have saved as many people's lives as Niels Bolin. He himself died in 2002 at the age of 82. 25 years ago, the UK started mandatory belt laws whereby you had to use a seatbelt, it was required by the law. And since then, apparently 45,000 lives have been saved. And what we say in the UK is one life is saved every day by wearing a seatbelt. Advanced seats, belt tensioners, airbags and neck restraints are useless if the vehicle occupant isn't first wearing their seatbelt. Seatbelts are also a key part of children's restraint systems, which have saved many youngsters' lives. The next generation of safety belt will be improved safety belts. Uh, it will be the same principle, 
where you load the occupant in the most uh, strong parts of the body, it will be more adaptive, adapted to the size of the occupant and uh, crash severity, and more user friendly. Well, the use can be improved. We still have a, a substantial portion of uh, people in the U.S. who aren't uh, buckling up. And as a result, we believe that if we could get everybody buckled up, we could save another 5,000 lives a year. It's 5,000 deaths that we could prevent if, if everybody would just buckle up. Now, what can we do to achieve that? One of the key things we can do, I think, is to have an effective reminder system in cars where the, the, the car will electronically remind you if you haven't uh, buckled up that uh, safety belt by some noise that, that you would like to turn off. Uh, the other thing in the U.S. we need to do is we need some better laws. The way we've gotten uh, most of our population to buckle up is through uh, safety belt use laws. If you look at a three-point safety belt 50 years ago compared to a three-point safety belt today, it's a huge difference. The basic principles are still there. You can put it on using one hand. It has a good geometry. It's holding the upper body, the lower body. But if you look at the specific technologies with pretensioners, uh, load limiters, pre-prepared restraints, all of that, there's been a significant development of the safety belt and the restraint itself. And that era will continue. We've been looking at four-point belts, etc. But whatever we will do, we'll still have those basic principles that were established by Nils Bolinin in 58-59.